If you like this video, please press the subscribe button to subscribe to this channel and also give it a thumbs up. Carbon-14 dating is a common method of radiometric dating used for dating organic material. Not only does this method of radiometric dating not prove an old earth, in many ways it goes against it. Furthermore, it is a method of dating that would have been easily and naturally disrupted by the Genesis Flood, making arguments against the Flood using carbon-14 dating worthless. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of carbon. An isotope of an element is a variety of the number of neutrons within the nucleus of individual atoms. The most common and stable form of carbon is carbon-12. Because atomic isotopes are all chemically the same, they form the exact same compounds. Consequently, when any living thing eats, it takes in a certain amount of carbon-14 along with carbon-12. Carbon-14 has a half-life of about 5,700 years. That is, this amount of time that it takes for half of the carbon-14 in the sample to decay into nitrogen-14. One of the consequences of this is that there should be no detectable carbon-14 in any sample older than about 5,500 years. Furthermore, even if you start with an Earth-sized chunk of pure carbon-14, there would be none left after a million years. Consequently, there should be no carbon-14 in any sample that is a million or a billion years old. One of the key assumptions behind carbon-14 dating is that the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere is constant due to more being created by cosmic rays and balancing out the decay rate. As any living thing takes in carbon from the atmosphere or whatever it is feeding on, the percentage of carbon-14 should be roughly constant. However, after death, because no more carbon is being added, the carbon-14 level starts to decrease as it decays. This is the basis of carbon-14 dating. Now, one of the problems when it comes to dating objects older than about 2,500 years is that the Genesis flood would have disrupted the levels of carbon-14 in the atmosphere significantly, reducing the starting percentage. It would have taken roughly 2,000 years to balance it out, Consequently, any date derived from carbon-14 that ignored the consequences of the flood would start producing older and older ages. This explains why some carbon-14 dates are not only older than the Genesis flood, but the biblical date for creation as well. Carbon-14 does cause a problem for an older because of the fact that no sample that is supposed to be millions or billions of years old should contain any carbon-14. However, measurable amounts of carbon-14 have been found in fossils, fossil fuel, such as oil and coal, and even diamonds. This fact means that it can not possibly be millions and billions of years old. Now, evolutionists have tried to explain it away by contamination, but because of the hardness of a diamond and the fact that it is held together by atomic bonds, this is a very unlikely explanation. Realizing this, evolutionists have produced Yet another alternative, the claim that radioactivity from within the Earth converts nitrogen-14 back into carbon-14. The problem with this idea is that in many cases, the local radioactivity is insufficient to account for it. As a result, carbon-14 is not a problem for biblical creation, but it only seems to be a problem when carbon-14 is used to date an object while ignoring the effects of the Genesis Flood. Instead, carbon-14 is actually more of a problem for an old Earth, because carbon-14 is found where it should not be if the Earth is billions of years old. Mm -hmm.